So, welcome to Times Square. Busy place, right? 400,000 people a day come through here. More subway stops in a small area than in almost any other place on the planet. And yet, I'm going to talk about some things I've seen in this crazy, chaotic place that you wouldn't necessarily expect in Times Square and an idea that grows from all of that, the power of the pause. Ever since Times Square was named Times Square in 1904, when the New York Times built its headquarters in this building, <clears throat> Times Square has been many things to many people. But as it's gotten busier and busier, it's become also something that re represents what people love and hate about New York City, about cities in general, about capitalism, about America, and really about our modern lives. And you get it when you spend some time in Times Square. You go out there and you're thrilled by the energy and all the things that are coming at you. All that energy, all that craziness. It's humanity not at its best or at its worst, but at its most. But you're also sometimes distracted beyond belief and overwhelmed by the intensity and the incessant things that are coming at you the relentless reminders of all those things on those signs that we need, or we're being told we need, or we should desire, but maybe we don't need so much. Well, Times Square is a place that can be about the power of the pause. And what I'm gonna tell you is that, you know, partially because of that energy, you may think, I wanna get out of Times Square, I wanna pause, but not so fast, because Times Square reflects where our world is going. In 2030, 60% of the world's population is gonna live in cities, far more than now, and the number of people who say that their life has become more stressful in recent years is gonna become greater, not less, as more and more things come at us and our lives become more full and more frenetic. And so what I'm really here to tell you is that you're actually never going to escape Times Square. <laughs> Sorry about that. But there is a solution. It's mind over madness. It's the power of the pause. It's the ability to slow down. And you know, it may just work, because I've been here 11 years, and at least according to my mother, I'm still sane. <laughs> so, Times Square has always been about play. It's about the play on the stage. It's about the Broadway play. It's about the performance that must go on. And then, back in the old days, it was about a different kind of play, this kind of arcade, where there's games and entertainment. And you can see that in this arcade, it was a shooting gallery, and you see, even though they had real bullets, they weren't shooting real people. That was a little later in Times Square's history. <laughs> and after Playland, we went to Playpen. <laughs> and that's where we broke all the rules and we unleashed forbidden desires. Did I say we? I meant you. I meant you. But that kind of play may not be in Times Square anymore, but in the 20 year, last 20 years, the different forms of distraction and entertainment and play have only multiplied a hundredfold. There's more out there coming at us than ever before. And so we have to figure out how to deal with that. And what do we do with that? Well, it's the power of the pause. Let me explain. Scene one. Times Square, New Year's Eve, my first New Year's Eve, I go into this building, this building which you just saw before, but now it's covered with signs, it's got the ball at the top. I see more television cameras than I've ever seen in my entire life. What was it? Was it Bill and Hillary Clinton? Was it Colin Powell? Was it Lady Gaga? All those folks have been part of New Year's Eve. No, it wasn't that. Was it Ray Kelly talking about anti-terrorism techniques? Nope, wasn't that. All those cameras were there because we were about to screw in a light bulb. Now, it was a very good light bulb. <laughs> Philips Halogena light bulb, super energy efficient, super bright. But it was a light bulb. And so I thought, what's going on here? And it took me a while to figure it out because I had to watch people making the pilgrimage from around the country and around the world and coming to Times Square to stand outside for six hours to watch a ball descend from a pole for 60 seconds. And they did it in spite of the cold, but more importantly, they did it in spite of the craziness of the world. Because every year, in the weeks or months before New Year's, something terrible would happen. There'd be a tsunami in Southeast Asia, there'd be another terrorist attack, attack. there'd be a war that started somewhere in the world. And yet, that told me that people were coming there in spite of that craziness. They weren't just coming to play. They were coming because they were tapping into the deeper meaning of New Year's, 
which is really about pause. It's about celebration, reflection, and renewal. I'll explain. New Year's is about celebrating the good things in life, taking a moment to celebrate the people we love and the things we love, no matter how crazy the world is. It's about taking the time to pause and to reflect. It's about reflection, reflecting on where we've been and what we've been through during the last year and the fact that no matter what's happened, we've kept on keeping on. And it's about renewal. It's about taking a breath and pausing before we start something new or before we try and change. That's right. New Year's Eve, which most people don't really think of as a Zen moment, is actually about pause and pausing to celebrate the great things in life, to reflect on where we've been, and to take a minute before we try something new. And it's no accident that the New Year's Eve is derivative of the winter solstice. And it comes from the Latin words meaning sun, which is soul, and to make stand still or to come to a stop, which is sistera. So it's about the sun standing still in the sky before the days that have been getting shorter and darker start getting brighter and longer. It is, in effect, a celestial pause. Scene two, Times Square, a year and a half after that first event for New Year's, I come out and I'm there with Douglas Stewart, a friend of mine who teaches yoga, and there's three of us on the summer solstice, the 21st of June, the longest day of the year when the sun is also standing still in the sky, and we're out there at dawn. We were lucky enough to have the New York Times cover us. We were unlucky enough to have them write this in their opening sentence. If you are lying on the ground at 5.30 in Times Square, at 5.30 in the morning, the odds are likely that you are homeless, drunk, or dead. <laughs> well, we were neither of none of those things, but we were a little crazy. Well, or were we? Because 10 years later, those three people became over 14,000 people pre-registered to do yoga throughout the day from dawn to dusk on the longest day of the year. Why were they there? It was the power of the pause. Because we said to people, anybody can find peace of mind at the top of a mountain. But we dare you, try and find it here in the middle of Times Square, in the middle of the busiest and most frenetic place on the planet. Use your mind to overcome the madness. And you know what? They did. They did that because like you and like me, they've chosen to be in the middle of it. Chosen not to run off and live in a monastery, not to avoid the challenges of living in this crazy modern world. They've decided that they're going to be in it and get through it. But the irony is, the only way to get through it is to suddenly and dramatically be still and take a breath and to slow down. It's the power of the pause. Scene three. We've been advocating for five years. We need more pedestrian space in Times Square. It's way too crowded. So Mayor Bloomberg and his transportation commissioner come to us and say, all right, guess what? We're going to close down the street in the middle of Times Square. You can imagine the reaction. People went crazy. The traffic's going to be terrible. The cars, it's going to be impossible. We had a different challenge. We <clears throat> um, were supposed to have some nicer chairs arrive for Memorial Day when it was going to get closed down. They didn't arrive. So we ran out to hardware stores, literally, and bought 450 of these absolutely gorgeous beach chairs. <laughs> but the amazing thing is when we started to put those gorgeous beach chairs down, not on the French Riviera, mind you, but on this nasty-ass pavement in the middle of Times Square. People sat down in these chairs like they had spent all of their lives and every Memorial Day hanging out in Times Square just watching the life go by. And the amazing thing is what they did is they did exactly what these folks said. They slowed down and they looked and they watched and they noticed some things that they hadn't seen before. And then that debate about the cars shifted entirely to a debate about the chairs. The New York Post hated the chairs. The New York Times loved the chairs. People made t-shirts. They made t-shirts with chairs on them. And they did polls, and everybody loved the chairs. But what we realized is that the debate was really about what people wanted Times Square to be, and in a larger sense, what they wanted their lives to be. Was it just going to be about incessant, endless movement? Or was it possible that we might actually have a moment of pause? And so. What happens when we pause? Why do we do it? Maybe we see something in a little bit of a different way. Maybe we see something we haven't seen before. Maybe we regain a little bit of that childish sense of wonder and awe that we haven't had for a while. But either way, no matter what we do, when we're 
being present, and we're still. We regain the capacity to move again and to move forward. So I'm going to ask you for a second here to close your eyes in a minute, and I'll tell you when you can open them. But I want you to take a minute and breathe and to pause. I want you, maybe you're going to think, don't think about the past with a sense of regret. Don't worry about the future. Don't get distracted by the chaos of the present. Maybe you'll think about the things that are most important to you, the people that you love. Maybe you'll think about the things that you're most passionate about, the things that make life worth living. Maybe you won't do any of that. But just close your eyes and close your eyes now. And just for the next minute, think about those things. Be still. Notice your breath and begin to tap into the power of the pause, just for a minute. I'll say when. Thank you very much.